Home Assistant Amber has been absolutely smashing its crowdfunding goals since it was first announced, reaching its initial target in under 5 days and currently it's over 180% funded with 9 days left. And I can definitely see why it is a really attractive first attempt at some custom hardware from the folks over at Nabu Casa. But it's all well and good looking at some images of a product on a Kickstarter website but sometimes you want to actually get a physical look at a product to get a feel for it, you know? And uh, as it just so happens, I happen to actually have one right here. So uh, why don't we do that? The guys at Home Assistant were kind enough to ask if I wanted to check out the Amber to give you my thoughts on it. Apparently this is one of only two units out there in the world right now. So uh, we're definitely gonna need to be careful with this one. But yeah, big thank you to Paulus and the rest of the team for sending this over. And I've had this for a couple of days to play around with it to give you my first initial impressions. Not quite long enough for a full review. That is going to be coming in the next video in a couple of days. So make sure to get subscribed so you don't miss that. But yeah, thought it'd be fun to physically show you the Home Assistant Amber hardware. I don't have the final case yet or the final enclosure, only a prototype 3D printed case, but I'm excited to show you the rest of the hardware and how it works. So let's get into it. So first thing I noticed about the Amber when I unpacked it was it's actually much smaller in the hand than I was expecting and from what we had seen in the photos. You can easily hold the board in one hand and the footprint is really small. Now, as I mentioned, I don't have the final case yet, so we will need to wait a little bit longer to see what the full unit is like. But the board itself is super nice and compact, meaning that this guy can be tucked away really anywhere if you want to and it's not going to take up a lot of space. Let's quickly recap the ports we have here. So in terms of the main I.O., we have a power jack, a gigabit ethernet port with optional power over ethernet, a USB type C port, two USB 2.0 ports, a three and a half millimeter audio jack and two physical buttons, one of which is reserved for factory reset. Then down at the bottom of the PCB, we have our M.2 slot, which can be used for expandable SSD storage, which we are going to do a deeper dive on in the full review. And then we have these two teeny tiny connectors where our Raspberry Pi compute module connects onto. And it literally just pushes on and pulls off. It's not like super easy to pull off so you're not going to accidentally knock it off. It does require a bit of force to remove it, but it does make it so incredibly easy to swap out if you want to upgrade RAM, storage or connectivity in the future by simply replacing the compute module. You also notice that the PCB has some small holes in it and this is for the custom heatsink for the compute module that snaps right into place and helps keep the temperature down. Finally, in the bottom right hand corner, we have our teeny tiny Silicon Labs Zigbee module, which will allow us to get up and running with Zigbee devices right out of the box without having to add any dongles to our setup. It's all just contained in this one unit. And of course they mentioned that this is also going to get the firmware update to Matter and Thread once that is all finalized, so you're getting that future compatibility. Oh yeah, and if you look really closely just below the Zigbee module, you'll see that there is a 10 pin header. And these are some of the Raspberry Pi's GPIO pins. So not the 40 pin header you might expect to see on a standard Raspberry Pi, because lots of the pins are already in use from things like the Zigbee module or buttons or LEDs and stuff like that. But you do have a couple of free GPIO pins right at the bottom of the board. Now there is a few different versions of the Amber available. The one I have here is the standard Home Assistant Amber, which is the complete package. So it has the Amber PCB with a compute module 4 with 2 gigabytes of RAM and 16 gigabytes of eMMC storage, the power supply, case, heatsink, everything you need basically. If you order that version, you will just need to literally plug it into power and ethernet and you are done. There is also the PoE version, which I think they're going to be calling Amber Pro, which features power over ethernet, so you only need a single cable for data and power, which is really nice. But you also need to supply your own compute module 4 so that you can choose whichever suits your needs in terms of RAM and storage. And you'll also need to do a bit more work to get it installed as opposed to just plugging it in like the standard version. But you're getting the nice addition of PoE. 
I don't have one of those here today, but I do have one of those on order. So whenever we get that, we will be able to take a closer look at it and show you how that works. So as I mentioned, setting up the Amber so far has been an absolute breeze. Literally plug this guy into ethernet, plug in power, wait a few minutes and you'll be able to access Home Assistant in your browser as normal. And again, depending which version you buy, you may have a few extra steps to do, but if you get the kit that comes with everything, then the setup is super simple, allowing you to dive right in and get started with connecting your devices. Now, speaking of power, you will need a 12 volt, two amp power supply, which comes with the Home Assistant standard kit, or if you get the power over ethernet version, obviously you will probably be powering it via an ethernet cable. Now you may be looking at the USB type C port on the back here and wondering if you can use that for power. Unfortunately, you can't. It's actually used as a serial monitor so that you can see a display of sorts since there is no HDMI port. Kind of mixed feelings on that one, but yeah, you do have either the included power brick anyways, or you'll be going for power over ethernet, in which case it is a non-issue. So that is your first look at the brand new Home Assistant Amber, and we are definitely going to be doing a deeper dive into this in the next few days, where we will go into much more detail. So if you have any questions that you want to see in the full review, please do let me know in the comments down below so that I can make sure to cover them. Maybe you're interested in how the SSD works, or you want to see how the Zigbee aspect works, or Maybe you want to know what happens if you factory reset it, whatever it is, then do let me know in the comments. Big thank you to Paulus and the rest of the team at Nabucasa and Home Assistant for sending this over so I can give you a closer look at it. Really appreciate it and super cool of you guys. And by the way, if you like the look of Amber and you want to get your hands on one, then there is still time. There is around nine days left of the Kickstarter if you want to pick one up as your next upgrade. Shipping times for the standard version are getting a bit longer now just because of how crazy the world is right now for electronics. But some of the other versions are currently around May or July shipping time, so that is still a good option. And I for one can't wait for this to launch and for these to start shipping. Really excited to see this product coming to life. But that is about going to do it for this video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Hopefully you found it interesting and useful seeing Home Assistant Amber actually in the flesh. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Perhaps you've already backed one or perhaps now after seeing this video, you are thinking of picking one up. Do let me know your thoughts in the comments. But other than that, if you want to support the channel, then you can do so by becoming a patron on Patreon and your support allows me to keep on making these videos. Thank you to all my current Patreon supporters. As always, your support is very much appreciated. Make sure to drop this video a like and get subscribed and I will see you in the next video.